Today we're going to use electrolysis to remove rust from a, uh, in this case, a, an old rim lock. This is uh, just something rusty I had lying around. It's as good as anything to show the technique. You're going to need a battery charger, uh, like a car battery charger, 12 volts or whatever you can see. It doesn't have to be very special. This one's been around for a while. Um, you'll need a sacrificial metal. Um, I've got these stainless steel plates and they're great. Um, you can use any kind of ferrous metal. Um, stainless steel is going to last longest for you and if you don't have stainless you can use uh, sheet metal, anything. Uh, the, the keys are a large surface area is good. Uh, you can use a pan lid, uh, go to a flea market and just buy old pan lids, stainless steel uh, lids, um, wherever you find it, but just keep in mind that you need surface area and stainless steel is best. Alright, the first thing we're going to do is disassemble this down to its components. Um, it is not, electrolysis is not a, a good technique for using on other types of metals, so um, you can see we can we can do electrolysis on all these components separately. Um, if you try to do it on an assembly, you might have some success, but mostly you won't because you need a really good electrical conductivity between each component. And I would doubt very much that these uh, components would qualify for good electri uh, for good conductivity between them. Um, so I take out everything I can. Try to remember how it goes back together. Now this piece, this slider here, isn't going to come out. So um, the thing is, that the conductivity between that and the main casting is probably negligible. Nothing's really going to happen to it. Um, so we're ready to ready to start our process. Now the first time you do this, you're going to need something to measure your water with and a container to do the electrolysis in. I use a uh, plastic uh, mud bucket. Uh, these You can get these uh, just uh, all over the place in a dumpster anywhere they're doing construction. And uh, you can also use a trash can, a, a regular mop bucket, anything that's non-conductive, so just a plastic bucket that's big enough for the part that you're going to do electrolysis on. Now the first time you, you, you set up your electrolyte, it's best to measure the water. I've got a gallon jug here of water, um, so I know that this is a gallon, and I pour this into my bucket. Now here's the tip so you never have to do this again. Once you have put a gallon into the bucket, take a marker and mark, mark that line. That's one gallon. Okay, now we repeat that as many times as we need. Now one gallon in my case is probably going to be enough. I'm going to put two in here. Alright, here's my second gallon. mark that so we know where two gallon is two gallons are in this bucket. It's like right there. Now you can go all the way up to four gallons. Um, keep in mind that these are not uh, mud buckets are, are not five gallon buckets um, but you make your marks and you, after that you can just fill it up with a hose and it will go a lot quicker. Now you make your electrolyte with Arm & Hammer washing soda. You can get this at any grocery store and this will cost you about three dollars and it's probably a lifetime supply of this. You'll never have to buy it again. I've had this box so long that it is split open. Uh, but what you need is one tablespoon for each gallon of water, in my case two gallons, two tablespoons. It's one tablespoon and two tablespoons. Now we'll mix that up really well. I'm 
And keep in mind, there's no need to heat the water. This is not hot water or anything like that. It's just regular tap water. All right, here's what we've got. We've got uh, the positive leads attached to our metal plates, our anode. That's sacrificial. The positive lead does not touch the water, or that will erode right away with your sacrificial anode. So don't let that happen. The negative lead is attached to a rusted piece. That can submerge. There's no problem there. And um, you all, the only thing you have to be sure of is that you have a good electrical connection. Now when I turn this on, we should see bubbles forming almost immediately. Alright, we turn it on and I don't know if you can see that but bubbles are rising up off the off our rusted piece. You can see that on the whole face of it. Um, if you do not see bubbles right away, that means your electrical connection is not not good. And it's either not good on your rusted piece, that's the most obvious one, and possibly you, you didn't connect it uh, well enough on your anode. Now this works completely through line of sight, so if the two see each other, if there's very li limited surface area between the two, then you won't have very good effect. And for you're going to have to turn the part around to de-rust the back of it as well. Alright, this has been going about a half hour now, and I think there's still a long way to go. This is a pretty rusted piece. You can do this for as long as you need to. Uh, overnight, hours and hours. Some lightly rusted things will be cleaned up by, by now. A half hour would have been plenty for something with just light surface rust. And it will completely get rid of all the traces of rust on your part, leaving only the bare metal. Well, this is going like gangbusters. You can see the bubbles just pouring off the piece. You can see the big hunks of rust that have fallen off and you're lying around the bottom of it. And it's been about two hours now. What I'm going to do is take it out and see if it's cleaned up enough or not. Alright, this is what it looks like just coming out of the vat and it's, I, I don't think it's going to be, we're not going to find that it's ready but we'll try it just to see. Now when it's really ruddy it's going to be completely covered with black oxide. Let's just uh, give it a little scrub here. Well, maybe that is ready. That's just about uh, completely Perfect, but it, I, I'm going to give it a little bit more time. We're going one more round. You can see the bubbles pouring off the part. Now keep in mind that this is mostly hydrogen gas, so don't introduce an open flame in the area or put a cover on the, on the container. completely clean right down to the original casting finish. The only thing left to do now is to dry it off and seal it in whatever way you plan to do it. Paint, wax, um, primer, anything. Remember it will rust again. And here's our finished part. It's dry and it is beautiful. You can see that all the original casting details are in place. Uh, it has not been damaged, such as if you used an abrasive medium to remove the rust. And it's ready for recoating.